Hey everyone, um, I am Melissa Morrow and I am the owner of Rave Home Staging. And while you might have seen me do quite a lot of staging videos, you probably haven't seen me do too many DIY videos. And right now I am working on a china cabinet. I'm repainting it and I'm not repainting it for the purposes of home staging. I'm painting it for the purposes of selling it. I have a little bit of a, a hobby of painting and refinishing furniture and then selling it. I love to be creative. It fills me with a lot of joy. And um, while we do a lot of repainting for staging, sometimes I need to be a little bit more creative and a little less generic um, than we can use in our staging projects. So today I'm gonna teach you a technique using um, Prima stencils. And we're gonna be also using, um, in this case, Rust-Oleum mirror effects. Rust-Oleum Metallics, Rust-Oleum Two Times Paint and Primer, and then some white vinegar and 91% isopropyl alcohol and some baby wipes. And so the first thing that I need to do is, um, I went ahead already and taped off the parts of this door. This is gonna be the, the upper doors and I'm going to actually create a, a rustic window, a vintage window, uh, well, a vintage looking glass where it's all distressed and um, the, like the glass has got all the, the pits and stuff like that in it. And I have been planning on doing it all along, but I really wanted it to have more character than just that. And so I've decided to go ahead and stencil some designs on my mirror first with the spray paint and then I am going to do the mirror effect. And um, so taping off is the first order of the day and then the second order of the day is getting the, the windows on the side that I am going to be painting really clean. And for that, I am just gonna use some of the isopropyl alcohol. And I've got a mister bottle and some paper towels and I am just gonna go ahead and clean them. Now you see brown paint on the other side and that's because I have sort of painting the, um, the exterior of the doors and you can see it on there where I have been um, painting. When I'm done, I just usually go ahead and paint right over the glass and at the end, I'll use a razor blade and clean it off. We're gonna be doing another video showing you exactly how I have what finish I have done on the on the cabinet itself so you can see this all pulled together so this is actually I don't know if it'll be part one or part two we'll see but this is my cabinet okay now that I have my glass perfectly clean and shiny and the reason this is important is because we're going to layer things on it and What's down here is gonna be completely covered in paint. So anything that is on the glass now will be sealed on there forever. Okay. So now that I've got that done, just a little smudge right here. Um, so now that I've got that done, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure because I am gonna use this stencil actually three times in a repeating pattern on each door. And so what I need to do is I need to make sure how this is gonna lay out to be appropriate in the cabinet. Now you could do this with any stencil, um, but this is the one that I'm choosing for this. So I'm measuring the glass, not the, not the whole door. And in this case, my glass is 90 centimeters. So I'm gonna do this in thirds. So I'm gonna put a mark here at 60 on the tape and then another mark right at 30 and I'm going to do this on the other side and then at 30 and then I'm going to do it on the other door. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm dividing the door into thirds so that I know where 
my stencil needs to go. Okay, now that I've got those marked, that lets me know that that's basically a third of the way down the stencil. Each section is in the third. And so because I have the name of the stencil on here, I'm gonna use that down so that when I spray all over this, I'm not actually covering up what stencil is. And I'm looking for my pencil marks and I'm gonna roughly try to center that within my pencil marks. And then the next thing I need to do is go ahead and tape that down. Make sure it's nice and secure. Now, if you were completely OCD, you might want to go ahead and measure around this stencil. I'm eyeballing it. I'm, I'm pretty good with these things typically, so hopefully, hopefully this won't make a liar out of me. Now, I debated about actually doing this with the doors on the cabinet, and then I thought, you know, this would really be better if it was laying flat. And so that's why I brought it outside. But I could have used the shelves to measure where I wanted this to go also. Now, so this is gonna define where exactly I'm gonna spray paint, but you'll notice I have all of this open glass that I don't want overspray. So I also have some puppy pads and that we use a lot for crafting. And so I'm gonna lay the puppy pads out over what is open. And I'm not really gonna tape those down because I need to move them quite a bit, but I am gonna use my supplies as weights. All I'm doing is just blocking off the parts that I don't want to have any overspray. Okay, now that I've got that done, I've decided I'm painting my stencil in brown. So that's gonna go really nicely with the brown that I have on the outside. I have chosen espresso satin, and again, I've got the two times. And I'm gonna do this in a light coat. For me, I'd rather do multiple light coats than a singular heavy coat. And again, that's my preference. If you want it to do it heavy, you can, but understand heavy coats are more likely to seep under the edges and give you a less crisp look. Oh, that's coming up a little bit. We did get some overspray, so I'm gonna have to clean that before we can move on. Now I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna go ahead and again take my alcohol, I think a baby wipe, and go ahead and get that over. Maybe I should have taken that age down. That's okay, I can still fix it. There is time. You see, it's coming right up off the glass. That's the nice thing about working with glass, is if on the first layer you screw it up, you're still in pretty good shape. What did I do with my paper towel? Oh, there it is. Cleaned up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull that tape up and let's move the stencil. And again, if you miss anything, if you end up having any open glass, as long as you correct it before you get to the next step, you are in good shape. Okay. So you can kind of see my image. It's a little bit fuzzy around the edge and it's kind of light, but that's exactly what I'm going for. 
So I'm gonna come down here to the next set of measurements. Actually, I'm just gonna take this tape off because I am gonna eyeball it better without that on there. I have my tape marks. I'm looking at them up and down and left and right. Take down. So now my next step is going to be covering the areas that I don't want to have over spray. This time I'm going to actually go ahead and take it down. So I didn't think about the velocity of the wind that we create with. And I do want to make sure that this is completely dry before I put anything over it. Actually, I'm going to go get another cup of that. And this is my brown spray paint, so I'm going to do the next step. And remember, I'm going to try and keep the same consistency. It's okay if they're a little bit off, but relatively I want these to look like they were printed at the same time. Feel pretty good about that. Move on to the stage of removing and setting the next stage. It's all a little bit of brown, but it is actually from the other side. Okay, those are looking pretty consistent in my opinion. So now I'm going to move on to the third. Okay. And just like before, I'm going to look for my marks. I'm going to center it left, right, and up and down. Now where I have a hard time with these pieces is that I find that very frequently I'll get done and I love it so much that I want to keep it. But I don't have that big of a house. So it just isn't as much, there just isn't enough room for furniture. Um, which is why I give so much of it to the staging company, but at the same time, um, I like to be super creative and a look like this is relatively buyer specific, and so it might not make the best staging prop. I want to make sure that this is completely dry. I still see a little bit of shiny, so I'm going to give it another minute before I put the puppy pad over it. After all, I don't want to put this on there and then have it um, smooched across. I want it to be nice and clean. And so far I feel very good about my consistency and I'm perfectly fine with the fact that there's a little bit of blurring in spots. Um, that's, that's perfectly fine for uh, this type of glass painting. So I'm not sure if you caught, but on one of the sprays, this one, I actually noticed that um, I had not taped over the part that said redesigned by Prima. Um, so I had actually sprayed that on my glass. So this is the time that I want to spend looking over everything, seeing if there's any overspray, if I made any mistakes like that one, um, if I've oversprayed around the edges anything like that because once I move on from here it'll be very difficult to fix. So one thing I didn't say at the beginning and I'm not gonna lie I'm a little bit I think I've checked twice now but um, I'm still a little bit nervous about is to say make sure that your doors are facing the right direction. I know this is the back, but I have an obvious up 
and down on my print. So these are not hanging the way they would hang in the on the hutch, only backwards. So what I'm gonna do, just to make myself feel a hair better, is I'm gonna actually swap them. So that I feel a little bit better about the way they fit together. There, because I know that I checked this door to make sure what was up and what was down. So now that they fit together nicely, and I can see that the um, all the, the the screws where the the hinges all go are on the outside. I feel a lot better. That's down. This is up. The world is in alignment. Okay. So with that, again, I'm going to check everything over really well, and then my next step is to use my alcohol and my white vinegar and my mirror glass. So where I'm actually gonna start is, I'm gonna get everything ready first. So I'm in Florida, I'm in Jacksonville, and it's a little warm here. So things dry pretty quickly. So I don't, I don't wanna have to be getting supplies in the middle of this. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my isopropyl alcohol and I'm gonna generously spray this over my surface, letting it puddle and pool in certain areas as it wants to do. Now, if you don't have a mister bottle, that's okay. I'm gonna do it both over my paint and over the glass. And then my next step is to take my mirror mate, well shaken, and I am gonna start lightly spraying. have really wet sections on my door where it's kind of pulled up a little I'm gonna use this baby wipe and I'm gonna actually start just dabbing and lifting some of those spots up and I'm sure you could use a wet rag if you liked but these are disposable and well, this is how I learned the technique, so this is how I do it. And if you feel like in some areas you've rubbed or taken too much off, that's okay. We have more to do. So this side has already started to dry, so what I'm doing is just sort of rubbing it over it because I don't really have much in the way of wet pools because the alcohol has already started to evaporate. Okay. Now that I've got that done, I'm gonna repeat the process. Now I'm gonna take my baby wipe again. And again, I'm going to go after these areas that are more moist. Now, for some reason right here, I can kind of almost see the outline of my stencil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my alcohol. And I'm gonna try to break up that line. And if you think I made it worse, it's okay because I still have more paint, I can fix it. something sticky on the back of my tape 
that created, that left the lines of the tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of try to pounce those areas out so it's less obvious and I'm gonna continue to layer. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna let those coats dry for a moment. And this side's already dry, so I'm gonna start here. And again, I'm gonna use a baby wipe to clean up my, to clean up any little um, really wet spots. And I'm gonna use my white vinegar this time, which is less corrosive to the gloss. And I'm gonna actually switch to the metallic paint because that way, um, the, the uh, mirror glass is quite expensive and also if you change textures, like if you wanted to go to a bronze or something like that or a gold, then you could and it, the different colors add a different dimension and a different look behind the glass when you see it. Okay, so now I've done all of that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, put these away and let those dry for a couple of minutes. And then we're on to our last step. Okay, so all of that is dry. And now we're on to the final step, which I have my two-in-one Rust-Oleum in the same brown that I originally did the stencil with. Using that same bottle, you could use a black, and that would transfer nicely. But my piece is very brown um, with some colors popping through, so I wanna keep this as simple as possible. I don't really wanna add another element. So I'm just using the same dark brown, and I'm gonna paint the whole back. I don't know if you can tell, still see that stencil pattern through all of this, that initial stencil pattern, even through the back. But I'm applying this brown because the glass that we put on there, the mirror glass, it's not fully opaque, which means that I could, if I hung this up without adding this dark brown backing to it, you would actually be able to lightly see through the glass um, almost more of a frosted effect, and that's not the look I was going for. Okay, I'm gonna let these fully dry, and then take off the tape and turn it over, and I will show you the results. I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, so here they are. This is what they look like on the other side, the side that will be facing out on my cabinet. I love how all the little dots and bubbles, and then even this is this is where we had that kind of kerfuffle where it actually had the line, and um, you can't see anymore. You can't see the ref trees reflecting, but um, you cannot tell where that line is anymore. It's really lovely, and. Uh, I haven't finished waxing the doors, but here's a sneak peek on the finish that I've created on the whole big piece. So I think you'll find when it's all done, it's pretty spectacular. Okay, so um, you can find us at Rave Home Staging and ravehomestaging.com. And if you want to just look at my DIY channel, you can follow us on both Instagram and Facebook at Squirrel on the Bee. I'll again put those links below. Thanks for joining me.